How's it going everyone? This is Tricks from Meta Smash. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at Spargo versus MKLeo's Pyra and Mithra. I've been waiting for a pretty long time to see some absolute top level Pyra and Mithra play. And of course, at this point, there really is nobody better than MKLeo as far as the very first few weeks of this character coming out. Just out of respect for the original content, I'm not gonna be showing the entire set. So if you do wanna check it out, I highly recommend it. I'll be linking the set down in the description below. With that being said, let's get into it. So we're going to be taking a look at game number two, and I'm just going to be analyzing from MKLeo's point of view, seeing what he does that's good, see what he does that's bad, pointing out anything that's interesting with how he plays with Pyra and Mithra. Starting off pretty standard, just getting a down throw into some sort of juggle follow-up with his Pyra, switching it to Mithra fairly early. I'm still trying to figure out what he really likes to do as far as his main play style. He does switch rather frequently. He doesn't really have a very specific flowchart. I'm sure he's still experimenting with the character himself since it is still fairly early. Able to get back on stage there, luckily. Mithra, honestly, you're going to see as well in this, in this game. Mithra, honestly... I feel like although he seems like the character that has the better recovery, the way that he uses Pyra to recover is actually outrageous. Almost getting a tech chase situation there, but he does get the follow-up afterwards with the up tilt on the platform. Right there, let me stop this as well. Let me go back a little bit. I think it's right here. So he falls off the platform. Comes down off the platform. Catches the down air right here. He wanted this up air, but I think it's just not being familiar with the, the character just quite yet. Unfortunately, can't get the up air, but he does cover his tracks. And it's something I talk about all the time when I'm coaching is if you get someone in a tech chase situation on a platform, don't leave from under the platform. He stays right underneath, gets his up tilt right here and continues the juggle situation. And very quickly covers all the way over to a ledge trap situation or ledge trap area, tries to get that ledge trap, but isn't quite able to get there in time. I like how he uses the up B to recover from very high. I don't even know if you can actually challenge that. I'm pretty sure that coming down with up special still counts as using a disjoint coming down. So good luck trying to challenge that. Able to snap to the ledge and make it back. Getting caught with the back air though. And right there, that's the trouble. That's the biggest weakness with the entire character right there. Getting sent at that low, far angle off stage. So if anyone's trying to fight Pyra and Mithra, if you have down smashes or forward tilts or down tilts that send very low, I think of Captain Falcon's down tilt or like a Ganondorf forward tilt, something like that that sends very low and far. Those are the kinds of moves you want to use to try and gimp this character. Um, going right back in, going from Mithra right back into Pyra. Obviously having Spargo at pretty high percent. She's going to try and get a kill here. Forward are not quite doing it. Just up you out of shield. Pretty free. 169%. Not a whole lot you can really do. So right here, I think he stays as Pyra for a little bit. Also, I want to point this out as well. I've been looking at quite a few other uh, sets as well with other players. I saw Cloudy playing as uh, Pyra Mithra as well. A lot of players retreat to the corner with these characters. I'm not sure what the reason is entirely. There's something to be found out about that, at least for me still. But you're going to see the game is tied up and it goes right to the corner right here. Let's see what happens. Personally, I wouldn't do it, but I guess the fact that you can kind of bait somebody into fighting you under the platform, if you happen to hit them, then you can get them up on the platform. You have Blazing End as well, so they kind of have to jump over the platform to commit to getting past Blazing End. Makes it a little bit easier for you to even go under the platform and take back the stage if they commit to going over top to punish you. So there is that. Trying to get a grab. Just going to get a bread and butter here. Tries to get the down throw fair. Covering with the multi jab. He's really covering, yeah, I was gonna say, he's, he's really covering the getup attack range quite a bit. Of course, having down every T, uh, down is able to hit through the stage as well. So down is great, forward tilt's great. Uh, I think there's one thing coming up in the future as well where he starts using back air at the ledge. And I wanna talk about that too, if it does happen to be, uh, I think it's in this game. Missing that grab, unfortunately. Also keep in mind, we are, these, these games are online games, so I'll miss input like that. I wouldn't say it's uncharacteristic for everybody, but it's sometimes that kind of thing happens online, obviously. So right here, back in neutral, trying to approach with the Mithra. 
This is something that I would even do myself as well is when you're playing as Mithra, since she is so much faster, you can play at a much further distance away and punish much easier with your with your ground speed. Right. So you'll notice that he keeps a pretty sizable distance between himself and Spargo, uh, as you can see like right here, almost the entire stage distance away. Right. He moves towards there's like, he finally goes for some sort of uh, let me go back a little bit. He does go for a burst option right here. Luckily pays off for him. I, right here, I wouldn't have done this either. Or I wouldn't have done this at all, honestly. And this is just trying to get him to, bait, like, I guess, bait Spargo off the platform right here. But you have him on the platform, dashing away. I don't really care what character you're going to use here, but Spargo is going to come straight down. If he doesn't come straight down, he has, I wouldn't say an advantage, but he can come down with fair off the side and you're going to get slapped. But the fact that he comes straight down, this is, this is fairly obvious. So he's going to get hit away right here, losing his right here. He could have died. And this is just another thing too. Obviously he's in the moment. I'll also say, obviously MKLeo is better than me. I probably wouldn't even have a chance to be in this situation. I'm just pointing things out where I can, but where was it right here? Back air, fairly obvious right here. Using his jump. If he got caught right here, I guess this could have been a forward tilt. If um, Spargo didn't jump here, he could have gone for the forward tilt. The back air wasn't actually a bad idea either. The back air would have sent at a far enough and low enough angle to probably get a kill right here. Forward tilt right here would have probably gotten a kill if he caught him right before he touched the ground, having no jump. Mithra's recovery, kind of trash without a jump. Able to get that jab. Here comes Pyra back out again. So right here, so although he did get punished right here, you're going to see this a lot. He's still experimenting with this, so I'm not going to be hard on him about this. But you'll see he uses Blazing End a lot to recover. So he throws it out, and this actually covers so much space when you're trying to recover. You cannot get two framed. People cannot charge down smashes on you. They can't try and hit you through the stage with a down air because Blazing End is just there protecting you so you can recover. You also notice that he threw uh, Blazing End right at about the height of the of the stage. You can throw it a little bit higher than this, but he uses his double jump and his air dodge to make it back, right? He does barely get two framed. I think it was a, towards the very end of Blazing End. Yeah, it just ended. It just ended right there. So that was good on Spargo's point, uh, part to wait for that to come out or to finish, I should say, able to get the two frame. Took a situation, comes straight back down with the up B, able to get back on stage. There it is again. So right here as well, notice that it clanked with uh, Blade Beam as well. So we have a clank with Blade Beam. Able to protect Leo getting back, able to air dodge or jump to the stage. Jumping off stage, trying to bait some sort of movement off the ledge, getting the up air. Nice little tomahawk coming up from Spargo. So once again, right there, Blazing End. If you aren't doing this, so you look at this recovery. If you are not doing this and you play mostly Pyra or you even mix, mess around with Pyra at all, most definitely start doing this. Let's see you one more time. Blazing End comes out, keeps the jump, uses a double jump, air, do air dodge, gets to the ledge, and then is able to get some sort of punish and eventually the stock. Of course, not everything's always gonna work out that well, but more so just the recovery aspect of it. But here we are once again, notice, okay. Yes, we're at higher percent. He switches to Mithra to have the mobility, goes straight to the corner. There's something up with this. There's something that he's potentially looking for from here. Maybe he wants to try and get some sort of reversal. I know you can get like a cross up on shield into a back air just to pop them up and get back air into up air and get back air, potentially turn around into fair and kind of get a reversal off stage. Playing very low. First option, that's going to be trouble. And that's just unfamiliarity with the character. Can't really fault him there. Leo obviously knows. If he, know, if he knew how leggy that move was, he, he should know. Whether or not it crossed some shield or not, you're going to be in trouble right there. Nice blazing end. So we're going to get a roll on stage, no jump on stage. Okay, it's gonna recover low. Very safe down tilt into a retreat. So I think what he was looking for right here, right there. So getting the down tilt as a poke, that's great, but he immediately retreats. If Spargo rushes him, side B is coming out to cover that space behind him and help him to uh, retreat the situation. So he doesn't get hit by like a dash attack or like pivot cancel forward tilt or anything like that. Dashes away, gets some space. Those are the down airs. Wanted that confirm. It does work, but he's able to DI away. Okay, 
plays again, going through Blade Beam again. A lot of downers coming out from Leo. He's trying to get that confirmed just to try and get Spargo out of there so that he doesn't actually make this comeback. Once again, able to make it back using that same strategy. If there's anything that you take away from this video, it's that recovery right there, right here. Blazing end, double jump, air dodge, makes it back. Pushes on his shield, just trying to intimidate him. That's, I'll, I'll honestly say this right here is incredibly unsafe. Although, um, although Blazing End was still hitting Spargo's shield, uh, Leo, he can't grab or do anything from doing that. So if, Le if uh, Spargo wanted to get brave, he could have tried to maybe nair or up be out of shield. He might have got caught by Blazing End. If he didn't, he might have traded. It's kind of a bait because the fact that Leo didn't shield, he could have gotten hit. But if he did shield and then, then Spargo happened to just get a little bit crazy in the shield, it could have been bad for him. But uh, not, a, I guess he, he kind of just got out of the situation. He didn't want to really mess with this relatively like mid high percent. Nice parry. Another blazing end, just slicing through the blade beams, able to make it back. Super good recoveries. I think we're going to see it here again. There it is again. The up air off the plaf or off the uh, ledge. Playing at that long range, but then closing the gap. But that's the thing. Pyra is not fast at all, obviously. Like we know this at this point. But she can still play at that mid to long range with Blazing End, force people to jump in. There's the back air, and that back air is ridiculous. That back air is ridiculous because this move hits so incredibly low to the ground. If you've not seen the hitbox on this move, I suggest checking it out. But also the angle that it catches and launches people. Like this angle is super whack. Because if you're expecting a normal back air, you'd expect to get hit flat or horizontally towards the side blast zone. So you're going to DI in and potentially down or in and potentially up. But the fact that if you DI in and potentially up, you're just going to make this a steeper angle and die even quicker. So it's kind of a mix up, to be honest, if you're expecting like a forward air type of angle. And with that, that is going to be it for the video. Like I mentioned before, I am going to be only showing one game from the set to, to show respect for the original content. If you do want to see the entire set, and I highly recommend checking it out with the original commentary as well, please be sure to check the link in the description. And once again, this is Trickster Meta Smash saying thanks for watching the video.